Medieval measurements are particularly curious, especially early medieval measurements before there was any kind of standardization. Here's an interesting one for you. King Canute. Yes, the King Canute associated with the tides and trying to convince his courtiers that even a king couldn't keep the tides back. But he wrote a charter to the monks of Canterbury in 1023 and he gave them a harbour and he gave them all the taxes and money that went from the edge of the river inland but by a certain measure. The measure was the distance somebody could throw a small axe from a boat afloat in the river at high tide. Now isn't that curious? You'd think he'd have just said 20 yards or 100 yards. We actually don't know how far that grant of land actually extended. So I have a small axe. Now we obviously don't know what kind of small axe they were talking about but this strikes me as a, a kind of useful approximation. It's a bearded axe, it's got a long piece on it, it's reasonably heavy, a couple of kilos I would think. How far can I throw it and how much land did the monks of Canterbury get granted by King Canute? back in 1023. So the English translation of the charter from King Canute to the monks of Canterbury is as follows. With all the landings and dues on either side of the river, from Pepperness to Marfleet, extending as far as a small axe can be thrown from a ship onto the land when the ship is afloat and the river is in full flood. They also possessed everything in the Great Sea, beyond the harbour, as far as the sea at the utmost recedes, so presumably low tide, and the length of a man holding a pole in his hand and stretching himself as far as can reach into the sea. Let's see how far I can chuck this medieval bearded axe and see how much land the king is going to give to the monks. If I was one of the monks, I'd have got the biggest, strongest axe thrower and the smallest, lightest axe to chuck from the back of that boat. I wonder if they did that. I'm going to use I'm going to use a tree as a start point just to give me some idea. Obviously I'm not on a boat and obviously I'm not on water. I think it's unlikely they were allowed to do a run-up but you never know. It doesn't say you can't do a run-up so I suppose one could have do done it. I'm going to try and chuck it quite high in the air to give as long distance as possible. Let's see how far I can chuck this small axe and see how much land the king was going to have to grant to the monks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen yards in modern day measurements. Why King Canute couldn't just say fifteen yards from the edge of the river, I don't know, but I guess maybe an axe throw was much more symbolic of something. See if I can get it a bit further. I'll try it a couple more times. I'll see whether fifteen yards is broadly what they might have uh, been granted by King Canute. There's my marker. Right, I'm going to take a step this time, see whether it makes any difference. I'm sure there are better throwing techniques than I am using, but I haven't, um, haven't really ever thrown an axe before, so uh, I'm just going with uh, what I think might be the right thing to do. Right, here we go. Right, I'll do a step as if they were allowed to do a step. That was rubbish. Actually, it went further. That went 18 yards because it bubbled along the ground, it burbled along the ground. So that's an interesting one. It doesn't say where the axe hit first, it just says as far as an axe can be thrown. So I wonder whether skimming it along the ground might give your monks more distance. And also, I wonder how many times were they allowed to do this? Were they allowed to do it as many times as in a day or something and get the longest one? Or was it one throw? You've got one throw, 
We'll put a stake in the ground and that's it. I guess we'll never know. Right, last throw. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I think that'll do. It gives us a rough idea of how much land the monks got given by King Canute. Somewhere between 15 and 18 yards, I suppose, from the edge of, uh, well, from where a boat can go in the river. So it wouldn't necessarily have been the edge of the river, it would have been where a boat can float. So uh, probably enough for a whole street maybe. House next to the water, a street, and houses and warehouses one street back from the edge of the water. That was interesting and I think a good illustration of the absolutely crazy measurements that were employed in legal documents back in the Middle Ages. And I wonder whether the actual measurement itself was symbolic in lots of different ways. Maybe it was an ancient distance, maybe it was representative of something that we don't understand anymore, but it has a lot more soul and poetry than 15 yards. I find it fascinating that there was no kind of formal standardization of pretty much any measurement. The Romans obviously brought their own measurements and they had the Roman mile and we know that because we've actually got Roman milestones still around and those Roman milestones are a thousand double steps away, a thousand paces apart. Um, but once the Romans left and chaos arguably descended upon these islands, or at least Imperial Rome went away, I guess measurements became chaotic. Isn't it wonderful that there is a measurement which is as far as an axe can be thrown. There's something that evokes the Viking sagas in having a measurement like that. It's much more interesting than 15 feet. The distance a small axe can be thrown just brings with it all the poetry of the landscape and that world.